Hi, this is Professor Nugent. Um, let's talk about the results of round one for the simulation and give you some hints on how to improve your simulation scores. Okay, so in the simulation, the team called Nugent Go Zoom Cars is my team. I'm participating with you in the simulation. Um, this is one way for me to evaluate and review the simulation uh, with you and kind of see what's happening and also experience the same things you're experiencing in the simulation. So this first page is the company page and this is where of course you have your basic information and they give they provide a little background of what the simulation is and the, the idea behind it. Uh, the overview, so I was just reading this if you can, it's pretty interesting. The overview is your score for round um, the first round. So this overview points here. Uh, now this just signifies I'm in, we're now in round two. But these are my results from round one. And year zero, everybody starts off the same point in time with the same scores. Year one is the first year that you manage the company. And it, and it provides a series of metrics based on financial and operational results. And then a complete score at the bottom. So let's review each of these. So revenue per, per share, I was able to, to double more than double my revenue per share and went up 121 point percent. So this is a year over year increase. So to get from 12 to $26, that's 121 percent increase. Now I earned 100 points. The maximum points you can earn in any category is 100. So I earned 100 points here. Now for my quick ratio and debt ratio, um, my quick ratio went down, which means um, I borrowed money uh, and I have more debt, more current liabilities than the current assets. So since my quick ratio went down, I lost some points. My debt ratio actually uh, as a total of the company uh, decreased and that is an increase. So this is uh, the quick ratio. You always want this to be higher because it, the higher the quick ratio, the more um, assets you current assets you have the current liabilities as a multiple. The debt ratio looks at the percentage of debt compared to the entire company. So actually my percentage of debt is lower. However, my assets to liabilities um, is I have three times the assets to liabilities where year zero I had four times the assets to liabilities. So these are just measuring the debt. So if you want to really know what the formulas are for these financial ratios, you can check your financial accounting class because in the financial accounting textbook it has all these financial ratios. You can check your finance class textbook because that textbook has all these financial ratios as well. And I believe the student PDF, student user guide, uh, one of the sections here, let's make this bigger. If you go down to, let's see, here we go. On student manual, the uh, overview ratios, they have all the formulas of the overview ratios here as well. And these can easily be looked up online if you're confused as to what these ratios stand for and what they're measuring. Um, let's go back to overview. Okay. The gross profit margin, so there's three, three profit margins, gross, operational, and net. And these three profit margins should have been explained to you in either financial accounting or finance. And basically, we're measuring our profitability. So we, everybody starts out at 40% on the gross, 23% on the operational, and 16% on the net. So what this means is on the gross, for every dollar I make in sales, I have 40 cents gross profit. Operationally, after my operational costs are paid for, I have 23 cents per dollar. And after my taxes and depreciation are paid for, I'm sorry, taxes and interest are paid for, I, I have left 16 cents for every dollar I sell. Those, so if you want to look at it that way. But overall, what you need to do is increase these profit margins. Remember, you want to maximize the shareholder's wealth. And that's the key goal of operating a company. So this simulation is looking at your understanding. Remember, this is um, this 512 class is a course with many prerequisites. And the reason for that is you're supposed to have completed a number of courses 
before this, accounting, economics, finance, marketing. Uh, and this is sort of measuring or testing your ability to understand these concepts of business and apply them to a company. Now, the basics of any company is you don't run a company to go bankrupt. You don't run a company to um, produce very little returns. You run a company to make money and maximize the wealth of investors. So profit margins are key to that. So if you're not increasing your profit margins every round, like it, ex investors expect, bad things happen. In the real world, in the stock market, if you don't meet or exceed your profit guidelines, your, your profit percentages and margins, your stock plummets the day you announce that. So it's crucial that you maintain or improve your profit margins. So here, I had a 20% improvement on my gross. I earned 20 points. A 32% on my operational. I earned 32 points there. And I improved a 33% on my net. So... Now, if I'm improving my profit margins, that's going to help to improve other, other areas as well. Now, my total asset turnover is looking at um, uh, my assets in relationship, um, okay, um, sorry about that. My total asset turnover is looking at my sales divided, my, divided by my total assets. So here... Uh, I went down just a, a little bit, about 5%, because I accumulated a, a lot of new assets. I bought new production plants, uh, new investments, so I didn't really, uh, wasn't able to generate uh, more sales than the new assets I created. Uh, if you go to return on equity, I had, I was able to return, return on equity is looking at the company returns in perspective of the shareholders. So return equity is looking at net income divided by common stock equity. So here I was able to improve that by 60%. Earnings per share, I went from $1.90 to $5. So that was a 194% increase, but I only earned 100 points for that. The return on assets was a 27% return. And this is looking at return on assets is net income divided by total assets. So I was able to... Uh, greatly increase my net income as, re as a relationship to my assets by 27%. Uh, my market capitalization, this is the total value of the company, the stock times the outstanding shares. So I was able to increase that by 200%. And so I had 100%, 100 points earned on that. My book value went up 84%. I improved my, all my forecasts from the basis of 65% accuracy, which is horrible, to closer to 100% accuracy. So I earned 50 points in all those categories. And I had a surplus. I'm sorry, I, had a, I invested in my operations. So as long as I double my investments in my operations, I get 100 points. But I had a deficit. And the deficit cost me 100 points. Sometimes when you're playing this game, you may look like you have a surplus in the finance page on the pro forma financial statements. But if you don't sell every car that you forecasted to sell, that surplus can turn into a deficit. So if you over forecast, you may, it may look like you have a big cash surplus. But if you don't actually sell what you forecasted, that's, that's, that cash surplus will not materialize. So... That happened to me, and that was poor planning on my part. Okay, so this is how I did on the simulation, 700 points. So the question is, um, how is, oh, don't mind that. How, let's see, let's look under assignments, and there's a scale here of how my points translate to a grade. So by the end of the simulation, I want to have uh, over 3,000 points to get an A-plus in the simulation. Now... That's not a very easy thing to do, but I'm, you know, um, I'm hoping to um, do as best as possible in points. So just keep in mind this point scale is, is rather challenging, you know. But um, already in round one, uh, I have earned 700 points. If I could do that every round, I'll easily make over 3,000 points. However, it's I don't think it's as simple to do to earn 700 points every round because now this year one is going to get moved over to my baseline and in year two for next round I have to improve over my year one results. So that means that I'm constantly having to do better than I did last round. So that you know increases the difficulty as we move forward in the simulation. Okay. 
this is an assessment area where if you click on this you can get an idea of uh, where I didn't do so well so cash management here I didn't do so well I got a poor or a low performance so I can click on hints here and it'll, it'll give me an idea of how to improve it so assessments is a good area to look at to see where you didn't do so well and click on the hint to get ideas on how to improve it okay so let's look at charts now um, here we can see these are tables I'm not going to get to charts for a minute so as far as points uh, the Stern Auto earned an astonishing 1100 points in uh, 1141 points in round one and they beat 93 percent of all the other uh, simulation players for the past, I, I think this goes back to, uh, two years. So an incredible job by Stern Auto. Uh, Jimbo's did uh, almost, you know, we had Jimbo's, Wang, uh, Dreamer, G1, SBC, uh, Vroom, Vroom, Zoom, uh, all cl uh, close to 900 or above. So people are doing very well as far as points. Um, the we had we I guess the lowest points we had um, were 500 and even that isn't so bad because if you're doing 500 points and you do that for six rounds that's 3,000 points or an A in the project so nobody completely self-destructed on this first round here okay so as far as gross profit margins remember we started at 40 percent Every, I'm happy to see that everybody here did better than 40%. I don't know why I'm listed in there twice. Why is my company coming up twice? Um, that I'll have to check into. I'm not sure what's happening there, but don't mind that. All right, uh, stock price. You can see that um, my stock price was not the highest, but one, one little trick I used to increase my stock price is I purchased... I repurchased stock. I retired stock and it helped to limit my amount of outstanding shares, which helps to increase my results on the stock price at least. Okay, so this is a quick little chart to look at how you compare to other students playing the uh, simulation. Now, if we look at the, um, let's see, team performance charts, industry, there's a whole bunch of different charts here. Let's look at the team performance. Okay, so this is, my company by itself and you can see that in sales I was able to increase sales from 121,000 to uh, 241 um, million I'm sorry 121 million to 241 million um, net profits I was able to greatly increase my prep net profits from 18 to 50 million Okay, the, um, my, this is just profits to sales chart in both my sales and profits, which are denoted by this, I guess, yellow line here, increased. Um, my stock price went from, I guess, 5 to about 17. My earnings per share went from about 2 to 550. Uh, points, I had my first, I guess it's just one point chart right here. 767 points and what I sold um, and then this chart this chart's important here because you can see that my potential uh, my market potential is this blue box so I could have sold 2,272 cars however in reality I only sold 2,000 because that's the amount I built and produced so I left on the table 272 customers who were wanted to buy my car but couldn't buy it because I didn't have enough cars built. So that's a key thing to look at, especially when you're forecasting um, in future rounds. You're going to want to base your forecast not on what you actually sold, but your market potential. So if, so if economy class grows at, say, 25%, and I feel like my cars are going to be pretty much the same shape they were last year, I'd probably want to work off this blue total not my actual sales because they came in below. Um, okay, so here uh, my actual car sales met my demand and that could have actually created a little excess inventory which is necessary, not that great for um, my deficit. All right, so 
let's go back. Let's, uh, we can look at the sales charts that show um, sales by company. So for each of the car areas, you can see um, this is the economy class, who sold how many cars. And there's a key down here where if you want to isolate and take out, you can remove certain other teams or add them. I guess it's just a little feature here, no big deal. Um, in the industry charts, this is the one I think is going to be the most interesting. Yes, the industry charts here, you can see how you stack up. Here is your net profits per team, and you can see that uh, uh, one team really came in very low on their net profits, uh, while most other teams here, uh, this is of course Stern, SBC are the two top teams as far as earning profits. And you could find your team with this little key down here. Uh, and this is my team is orange. So I have uh, 15. So I'm kind of in line with this group here. But you can see that profits vary a, a great amount in the simulation. And that usually results in a varying amount of points as well. Okay. Okay, so if we go to points here, we could see that um, there are varying companies as far as points. One company here, Quality uh, Cars, had a very low points. That needs to, um, I think the problem here, if you look at the low points, that's a direct result of the low profits. So the lower profits here, they had unusually low profits. So what they need to do is increase their profit margins and profit percentages. Um, that's a must for that team. Okay, and you can see that the stock price kind of reflects that. So we have Quality Motors down here with a lower stock price because they didn't produce the profits that are needed to create earnings per share that investors like that push up the stock price. And we can see that Stern, with the highest amount of profits, had the highest stock price. Now, I came in second in stock price not because I had the highest profits, because I repurchased some stock that helped to increase my earnings per share. And which helped increase my stock price. So if you look at um, earnings per share, you'll see that it's very similar to um, I had the second highest earnings per share giving me the second highest stock price. And that's why if you don't have the profits, you're not going to have the earnings per share that's going to push up your stock price because that's what investors look at. If we look at sales per team, the number one team in sales uh, is not the number one team in profits or in points. That's because sales, while it's a good metric and you do want to imp imp increase them, doesn't necessarily mean success for a company. There are companies, there used to be this company called Buy.com, which was the competitor of, to Amazon.com. Now, Buy.com at one point actually had more sales, but every sale they made was a $5 loss or greater. So I ask you, would you rather own a company that has $100 million of sales, which equals $50 million of profit, so they make 50 cents for every dollar they sell, or a company that has $5 billion in sales, but has a $400 million loss? So you see here how sales, being number one in sales, doesn't necessarily translate to being the best company to own or, or work for. So if your sales are all at a loss, it doesn't matter how big your sales are, you want to be the company who has the best relationship between sales and profits. So that's a key strategy. Okay, earnings per share. And you can see there's a big divergence in earnings per share. And this is directly related to how people manage their companies. Even though you see sales are a little type, type, tighter grouping here, the earnings per share are quite different because everybody had different spending on their advertising, on um, in their production, in the design of their cars. So the earnings per share fluctuates a great deal. Now, keep in mind, if you're running this, if you're if you're doing this simulation, or you're running a simulation like a consumer, you're going to do bad because consumers are brainwashed to believe that companies provide the best quality, the best ingredients, the biggest sizes, and do everything to make the best car possible or the best product possible for consumers. That's what advertising does to convince consumers companies do that. But in reality, companies try to make try to lower costs and increase prices to make maximum profits. And that's, you know, if you're running this company like a consumer, then we haven't educated you very well in the business program because we really need to 
um, break that wall of you being a consumer and enter you into the world of running a company. And companies are all about increasing profits, reducing costs, um, uh, uh, and sometimes, you know, it, sometimes you do reduce the size of your product or the quality of your product uh, to make more profits, but you don't, you don't scream that to the customer, you advertise in a different way. Um, or you advertise more aggressively, you throw some dancing hamsters up, some laser beans, some robots, so they don't notice that your, your product is a piece of crap. But as long as you're making profits, that's the name of the game. Sorry to break that uh, illusion for you if you were under the other illusion that companies only do what's best for the customer. No, companies do what's best for the shareholders, unfortunately. Okay, and then this is just a big pie chart of everyone's sales. Um, by units sold and then sales by actual dollars. Okay, so that's an overview of how everybody performed. So we had a nice range here of people performing very well and people performing not so well. Um, let's go back to the simulation. All right. Um, so I wonder what the marketing charts look like. Okay, so this is just the marketing people, the money people spent on marketing per uh, team. So we have it per team and we have it per car. Okay, so there's the marketing is going to be. So we had someone here, Stern, they spent a lot of money in marketing and that probably translated into more sales and if they had a good design build and profit. So they may have uh, had the strategy where. I'm going to make a car that's not the best as far as meeting or exceeding everyone's expectations, but I'm going to advertise heavily to make the difference up so I could get a lot of sales and make a lot of profits. And if you look at a car like I was talking before about the dancing hamsters, like the Kia Soul has those commercials with the dancing hamsters and laser beams. Look it up on YouTube if you want to see the commercial. And that car is not a high quality car, but it sells very well because they will spend huge amounts of money making these commercials and advertising on a Super Bowl and advertising this, this vehicle heavily across the airwaves. So it's just basic common business sense. Um, now an industry page, here you get a look at, at everyone's automobile. And you could see that uh, how everyone made their cars. Uh, let's go down. So this is this is open to everybody. And just like you could walk up, go on the internet and view any any auto company's financial results for last year, view any auto company's how exact specifications of how they made their car. You could actually go to the dealer's lot and see how they're making the car this year on the the stickers on the car. So this is information that you're seeing on every team that also reflects what companies can see of each other in the real world, uh, public companies that is. Okay, so we have a lot of companies in here. So you could see, I'm just trying to find, I guess it's alphabetical. Yes, it's alphabetical. So in my, in my car company, you could see that uh, where my sales units are, my percentage of the market, um, how I design my vehicles, uh, my results as far as my uh, points and my financial uh, ratios and my total sales and advertising. So you get a good idea of how I structured my company to get my 700 points. Now, let's see, if we look at some of the other companies, uh, here's Stern, you can see that they had, um, you can also look at their sales price, the gross profit margins. Now Stern had profit margins in the 50, high 50s, um, well actually high, mid, uh, high, low, in the 50s percentile area. And I think that's what helped them uh, to do very well. So they advertised a lot more than me, even though I think my cars were designed a little bit better. So here again, if, um, if you look at Quality Motors, their company, their profit margins are below 40%. Uh, except for luxury, which is higher than 40%. And that's one of the reasons they didn't perform as well because their profits um, margins did not exceed last year's profit margins. So that, that hurt them. So again, uh, you want to make sure, see, I'm above 40%, which is my baseline. 
and that helped me to have an average profit margin higher. Uh, although I, did, I didn't do the best in the company, I'm sort of in the middle of other performers. So here you could kind of analyze who did the best and what teams did the worst to get an idea of um, your, your, your overall performance. And your strategy, how um, if you were did not do well last round, look to the companies that did very well. And what, how did they design your vehicles and how much did they advertise? And try to um, understand what the teams who performed the best did and maybe you can kind of uh, mimic some of their strategies or even approve upon them. And the companies who did very well, the top companies are going to have to up their game the next round and do even better to uh, fight off the competition. That's pretty much how the world works. So in the financials here, we have a backup of all the financials for the round. Uh, and then the simulation starts again. Now you'll notice here that I have these uh, cost reductions of 1200. That happens to be from the investments I made in the previous, uh, in year one. So now I have a cost reduction, which is gonna help me to um, make uh, my profit margins and every year these customer expectations are going to increase although the price I can sell for the car I can sell the car at will increase as well it never quite covers the full increase of the customers expectations so if I don't have this operational cost reductions I'm gonna have a hard time um, meeting or exceeding my customer expectations so here I'm going to blow my horsepower below because I don't really care about horsepower and I'm going to put in um, low on this and maybe I'll make this higher uh, maybe I should make uh, this a little bit higher so I'm going to redesign my vehicles uh, this year to hopefully beat uh, the whole name of the game is to beat my, my profit percentages from last year so um, here I have a 48 percent and if I look at uh, I guess the industry page might be the easiest place to find it and up here somewhere okay so I have 42 42 47 and 55 percent so I want to beat all these profit margins on my design for last year so when I go into sales I want to make sure that I beat that now as far as my forecast remember I looked on my charts page and I think I might have that maybe I have that chart up here Okay, so on my chart page, I'm going to look at what was my actual potential, 42.72. I'm going to pair that up with the student user guide. I'm going to look at the forecasting section, which is right here. And that tells me that economy is going to grow 25% um, per year. Sedan, uh, even get an example chart here. So... Uh, so it's going to grow 25%. So I'm going to guess that I can even take a um, calculator here and say 272 and maybe I'll multiply that by 25% and 2800. So I'm going to go, maybe I'll just go a little lower, just to be conservative. So that's a quick way to forecast. Just kind of basically see what I did last round, my, my, what my potential was, and increase it by the growth rate uh, of the industry, because I don't think my vehicles are going to be, my strategy for building my vehicles are going to be that much different. So I'm expecting to kind of perform around the same level. So just a quick idea of how to keep your forecast on target. And again, I'm just going to, you know, quickly put my numbers in here and what I'm trying to do here is I'm nothing too innovative I'm just trying to keep um, make cars that that um, I can make a profit at So I'm just gonna now this beats this doesn't this beats my last round profit margin. Um, I think that okay, so everything beats except for truck. So I might have to sacrifice some sales. Um, I'm gonna lower 
my horsepower, which is going to lower my sales, but it's going to increase my profit margin. It's a trade-off I'm going to make because I want to make sure that I can um, meet or exceed my profit margins. And, and remember, I, do, I would like you to fill out these reflective observations. I'm not really counting them so much for round one, but for round two and moving forward, I want to get a better idea of what you're thinking and, and, and how you um, are um, reflecting upon the facts and the results of the game so I get a better idea of what you're learning and what you know about the simulation. So if I do have to help you on an individual level, I have a better idea of what your... Um, thought process is. So everybody uh, needs to fill out those reflective observations. I'm going to submit data for round two and I'm going to move into uh, marketing and I see that the advertising ranges have increased uh, and that has to be going to be reflective in how I allocate my adverti um, advertising investments and keep in mind that the student user guide gives you an idea of how effective each of these areas are. I'm going to come back to that. I don't really want to waste your time with me filling those in. Let me go to production. And I see here in production that uh, I see here in production and have to buy a new plant for my uh, economy. It looks like I'm good on the other plants. And I had some extra inventory that contributed to my deficit. So I'm being a little bit more conservative on my forecast. And remember that when you make your production, the goal is to have zero excess or short. Why would you want to have excess vehicles that are year old? They're not going to sell at the same price. Why would I want to have a shortage? I'm forecasting a certain amount. Why am I building to meet it? So the only number that makes sense in this excess or shortage box here is zero. So I recommend that everybody put as, keep, produce as many cars as you need to meet your forecast. You can only do that when this is zero here. Okay, so I'm going to make some more operational investments because that helped to keep me profitable. So I'm going to um, increase that a bit. Let's see if I can afford it. So I'm going to go to the... Uh, and remember, there's reflective observations on each of the pages that it only takes a minute to fill out. You don't have to be really extensive and, and verbose about it, but just want to know um, your basic idea of, of what you're thinking about the simulation. And it helps you to really put you in the right mind frame to strategically think about what you're doing with these companies here. Okay, so now we'll go to the finance page. And I'm going to go right to the bottom. And I see I have a $2 million surplus here which is good, but that's not enough of a cushion for me. This is a pro forma, so it's based on sales, based on my forecasts. So if my forecasts are not correct, my sales number will not be correct, and all these numbers down here will likely change. So since I, um, I want to have a more of a cushion, I'm going to put in, I'm going to borrow some additional funds here to, I'm going to borrow these additional funds. I'm not going to issue any new stock. Uh, and last time, I actually retired $5 million worth of stock to help push up my earnings per share. This time, I, I don't have enough of a surplus. I have a surplus of $10 million, which I'm going to keep a $10 million surplus just in case uh, I don't sell everything I forecasted so I don't have an unexpected deficit like last time. Okay, so uh, you would fill out these reflective observations here, and I'm going to submit my data for round two. And now my round two decisions have been submitted and I'm, I'm ready to compete. I have to wait for everybody else to complete theirs before the round gets processed. And that's sort of an overview of how to interpret the results of the simulation. Uh, some ideas on how to improve your score. Remember, you're running a company here to maximize shareholders' wealth. So you have to increase profits, even if it's at the sacrifice of... Um, making a car that does not meet or exceed all your customer expectations because um, that could be uh, overcome with some extra advertising money. So again, the purpose of this simulation uh, is to integrate, for me to observe how well you're integrating all the subjects in business, finance, accounting, um, sales, marketing, research development, all these operations, all these key concepts you learned in the business school, I'm looking to see how well you can integrate and apply them to a simulation of running a company. 
So if you're running this company and you have no really idea what's happening or what's going on, you're not really understanding, you haven't really learned um, how to run a company in a business school. So maybe that's because you're, you haven't taken all the business classes yet uh, and that could be a possibility. Um, or maybe you haven't been able to apply a lot of the concepts to the real world. So here's an example, here's a chance to apply a lot of these concepts to a simulation which I feel by running this, I've run the simulation for a while now, it's pretty close to how things happen in the real world based on my experiences working for five or six manufacturing companies over the last 20 years. Okay, so that's it for this uh, review of round one and, and, and helpful hints on how to improve your score and I, I wish everyone the best for the next round. Um, Take care. Thank you.